As fundamental as dribbling is to basketball, or aiming is to first-person shooters, understanding frame data in fighting games, what is it, how is it used, and how can you be mindful of it in these games, is not just a matter of becoming a better player in a specific game, but becoming an all-around better fighting game player. On the surface, it can seem like a complicated science, like asking you to do arithmetic while trying to fend off JP setups, a task one would think is reserved for the most proficient of players. But the reality is that once you understand these basic blocks of fighting games, suddenly what seemed complicated will fade into your subconscious, and knowing whether you are plus or minus on a given fight will feel as intuitive as subscribing to Dash Fight. In a way, you already know what frame data is. You get a sense of it every time you play. In fact, every fighting game artist, sound designer, and animator tries really hard to make that information come across naturally because they want you to build up that sense of what is happening on screen as naturally as possible. Game designers go a step further and create gameplay systems that reinforce these ideas. Take pokes, for example. What makes them pokes? They are low damage, usually mid-range, fast startup moves. It means they are harder to react to than other normals. Because pokes generally adhere to those features, you will naturally develop a feeling for them and what they are supposed to do, open up your opponent for follow-ups, or check the space in the neutral. But there are numbers behind these, and not all pokes are the same. So how do you figure them out? In today's Dash Fight video, we want to give you a beginner level explanation of frame data, what it is, why it's important, and how to start proactively using it in your gameplay. In this video, we will often use Street Fighter 6 as an example. Street Fighter 6 features one of the most extensive training modes, detailed frame data, and is widely popular. However, other games do this too, and the idea of providing players not just the raw numbers, but how to use these has been gaining traction in everything from AAA titles to indie games. To properly talk about frame data and how it functions, we first need to tell you about frames per second, or FPS, and refresh rate, or Hertz. A frame is a static image. By quickly going through them, we can trick the brain into creating motion. The more frames you can go through every second, the smoother the motion will look. This is how animation works. In fighting games, you will see an internal simulation frame rate of 60 frames per second. Everything in the game will use this internal clock with each tick being a frame. But to see these, you need to match the frame and refresh rates. So the more frames you can output, the better. Pretty simple, but that is really only half of the picture, almost literally. If you have ever been looking around for a new monitor, you will have seen the term refresh rate. This measures how many frames the monitor can display per second. Even if you have 700 frames per second, if your monitor or TV can only do 60 Hertz, then you will only see 60 of those 700 frames. The rest of those frames are not wasted though. If you can produce more frames than the ones you need, then whichever frame is displayed will be the closest to real time as it can be. Imagine a bus line. The more buses on the line, the less you have to wait to get on one. Although this relationship between frames per second and refresh rate is not as important in fighting games as in other competitive titles, you still want a rock solid frame rate that you can maintain with a high refresh rate monitor. In most large scale tournaments, you will often have a 120 Hz or 144 Hz paired with a powerful console or PC with more than enough power to produce the number of frames needed. All fighting games are built upon these frames. Next time you hear a top player point out that the monitor is incorrectly configured or asked to change the settings from high quality to performance, listen, because they are right to point it out. Now you know every move comprises frames. Some might only be a few, while others can be dozens in total. But these frames can be divided into three basic types, startup, active, and recovery. Startup frames are the first portion of any attack. Your character will start performing the move once the game registers your input. During these start frames, you are vulnerable to your opponent using a quick attack or landing one they already started if you miscalculated how many startup frames your move takes. When this happens, that is called a counter, and in Street Fighter VI, your opponent will be rewarded extra frames for it. Active frames are the portion of the attack that can actually strike your opponent if it connects with their hurt box. Depending on your attack, these might be very short or long, move, or even become disjointed, meaning the overlap of the attack hitbox is outside your own hurt box. Active frames from multi-hit attacks might be intercut with vulnerable frames during which your opponents can counter you. Finally, projectiles have their own active frames. 
but depending on the move, you will recover before those frames elapse. Lastly, recovery frames are your character winding down their animation. Think of it as a cooldown. During it, you can't input another move. Some recoveries might differ depending on the game or character, like when the attack whiffs, is blocked, or parried. If you are hit during these recovery frames, that is called being punished. Sometimes you can cut recovery frames short. That's called canceling. And depending on the game you're playing, that might be part of the game's core mechanics. For example, in Street Fighter VI, you can use your super to cancel out of any normal attack. Beyond these three frames, games like Street Fighter VI also feature armor, invincibility, and movement frames. These are not necessarily universal in all games or characters, and like startup, active, and recovery frames, they are move dependent, and each game with them will have its own take on them. Armor often means a move cannot be stopped unless certain conditions are met, like a stronger attack, multiple hits, throws, etc. Invincibility is one of the most game dependent of these. Street Fighter VI has three types, total, projectile, and strike invincibility. Total means no attack, normal or special, can stop it. As you might have guessed, projectile invincibility means no one can interrupt it and strike the same, but for strikes. Movement frames are non-active frames used for movement. Street Fighter VI displays them during jumps and dashes, but they always run in the background. It is valuable to know these frames because there might be times when you commit to a move, like a jump, and have no way to stop it. Knowing how long that will be helps you understand when you can freely act again. You will notice that when you connect a hit against your opponent, they will enter a period during which they cannot move or act. This is called hit stun, and it is also calculated in frames. If an attack connects, but your opponent is blocking it, that will also trigger the same effect. Block stun, advantage or disadvantage, also called plus or minus, refers to the number of frames at the end of a move or string in your favor or against you. Take Luke's Crouching Light Punch, 2LP, which has four startup frames, and assuming you hit your opponent, it will leave you with a plus five frame advantage. You can even do it again since you have those frames before hit stun ends for your opponent. After all, the attack only has four frames of startup. A quick note on frame notation. Startup frames always count the first active frame in its notation. That is why you can see Luke's 2LP be four frames to start up, even though it has three according to the frame meter on screen. Now, the vast majority of moves will not chain into themselves. Instead, you need to think about what and where each move is best to use. Street Fighter VI also does counter advantage, meaning that if your attack is also a counter, landing during the startup frames of your opponent's moves, it will give you an extra two frames at the end, boosting what was a plus five on hit to plus seven, for instance. Remembering all the hit, block, startup, active, and recovery frames for all characters is a task only the most enlightened minds of this generation could dream of achieving. So what can a mere mortal do to use this information? The easiest way to start is to think through link combos. These combos use the advantage, or plus frames, created by an attack to chain in another one. Luke's Crouching Medium Punch, 2MP, gives us a plus five frame advantage on hit which means we can follow it up with a move you've seen before, 2LP. This is just a basic example. The critical part is that you can use the plus frames from your move to follow up with an action with equal or fewer startup frames. Though, be warned, there are exceptions in every game. An exercise you can do right now is to take your favorite character, look at the moves with the most hit frames possible, then look for attacks with the fewest startup frames. If you get plus seven from a move, then you know anything equal or below that, a three, four, five frame startup will connect no matter what. Practice and experiment with this. Almost every single move will have plus frames on hit and minus frames on block, but it's a good idea to check which ones break away from this. There will be a few moves with plus frames on block, although not enough to link them with others. They can be a great way to counter opponents who might rely on big startup frame moves after a successful block. You can also encounter moves with no plus frames on hit. Generally, these are used as combo extenders since they add a bit more damage, and as normals, they allow for cancels or might have some other type of utility, 
like juggling the opponent up in the air. These can also have a lot of pushback, meaning that although they are minus, they can help push away opponents to give more breathing room. Speaking of pushback, all attacks have some push to them, making it harder to connect specific attacks to others, even though you should be able to purely by the frame data. This is why there is a fundamental distinction between combos that can be done in the middle of the screen or the corners. Every developer will have their own set of tools with which they want to balance these potential looping combos or overpowered strings. In Street Fighter VI, although you can cancel out of some normals, there are times when the game will let some active frames play out so that those moves can't be used in tandem with other powerful cancels. In general, looking up combos, guides, and tips will go a long way to helping you know more tools, but you still need to understand how to apply those tools. Just because you have a bread and butter combo, ready to go in your memory, it means nothing if the first move is a seven frame startup and your opponent can just counter it with a six frame normal every time because that is the only move you do. Try to learn a variety of combos, especially ones with different starters and which moves leave you with plus and minus frames so you are always ready to adapt to what your opponent is putting out. Look up your most problematic matchups and see which moves give you the most problems. Maybe that kick that seems to leave you plus two on block is actually plus six, so you can mash out of it with the proper normal. If you wanna go deeper, you can start thinking about other ways to gain frames. We've mentioned before that counters give you a plus two frame advantage in Street Fighter VI, but there are many other ways you can add even more frames to that. Finally, you can start thinking about juggle combos, which still rely on the frame data conventions, but depending on the game, go from hard to incredibly hard to execute and develop. Although we've devoted much time talking about numbers today, it's essential to focus on the fundamental at play here. You can build an advantage for yourself and even respond to opponents' moves before they happen and the tools to do that are right there for your taking. Remember that even though much of what is in this video will help you in any fighting game, you still need to check what each title does differently from this baseline, and many do get wild with these rules. So why don't you tell us in the comments, what are your personal favorite frame data quirks in fighting games? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.